What does Twitter like and dislike about Battlefield 5? Over the weekend, I asked people on my Twitter account this relatively simple question, and I got over 500 responses to it, so I thought I'd do something with it as something was like kind of a different video. I don't really do this very often, so I want to take some of those and highlight some of the responses here just to see what differences we have, what people prioritize over other people, and we can see if there are any common themes that come out of this. So, starting things off, we have a response here from AKA Art, a fellow Battlefield content creator on YouTube. The thing that he said he likes the most is the infantry gameplay, especially in the grind limited time game mode. Now, Art, I'm going to agree with you here, infantry gameplay is really, really good in Battlefield 5. I think the movement's really slick, the gun handling is really smooth as well. Playing as an infantry soldier is what most people end up doing in Battlefield 5, and for the most part, it is a really good experience. The grind game mode, it's chaotic mayhem for sure. I enjoyed it, but I know a lot of other people didn't really care for it at all, but... For me, the mode was supposed to emulate the meat grinder experience from previous maps like Operation Metro and Operation Locker from previous Battlefield games, but to me, it felt similar, but it didn't quite feel similar enough, and therefore, I didn't really value it as much as the meat grinder experience from previous maps like Operation Metro. Part of it for me if I want that experience, I will go back and play Operation Metro, or I'll be waiting for Operation Underground to come out in October, which is supposed to be that reimagining of the Metro experience. It's set down in the tunnels in a Metro environment, so it's going to give me a very similar vibe. Grind was sort of set out in the open on current maps that we have in Battlefield 5. It's just, it didn't quite feel the same. It was good fun for the time it was there, but... I didn't really appreciate it for perhaps the reasons that I should have. But then Art goes on to say that he dislikes the vehicle gameplay, which, coming from somebody like Art, who I know loves his vehicles in Battlefield games, that's going to have to have hurt him to say that, almost admitting that the thing that he really looks forward to in the games that he loves in this game isn't really up to his standard. The thing that he looks forward to most, he doesn't like. That's got to hurt. Next, I've picked out a comment here from a guy named Brazip, and this comment I would like to showcase because I've seen a lot of similar ones further down the thread. It's that he likes the World War II theme, but the game is lacking the World War II feeling. It's something that I've actually been saying since the very beginning when Battlefield 5 was first revealed. This game may very well be a World War II shooter, and that's exciting because there's so much that can be explored when it comes to locations and battles and weaponry and vehicles, but Battlefield 5 just doesn't really feel like a World War II game. There's something about the atmosphere that DICE created for this game that doesn't reflect the World War II that we as a community have come to expect through other showings in popular culture, and perhaps that's the issue here. Our expectation was perhaps that we'd see Battlefield 5 as something similar to those films and TV shows depicting World War II. Band of Brothers, The Pacific, uh, Dunkirk, Fury. These really dark, gritty settings with brutal combat and intense fighting. But instead, we've got a lot of sunny, bright environments filled with cartoon-looking soldiers running around. We're missing that grit that I think we've all come to expect when World War II is the subject, and I'm really hoping that DICE can inject some of that grit into the game with the Pacific Theatre that's coming in the autumn. That's going to be a big moment for Battlefield 5, and if DICE can nail the feeling there, they might just be able to turn this game around a little bit. And then we've got this comment here that I wanted to highlight because it's starting to show a real positive mentality for the gunplay. We've got another good comment here for the gunplay. It's a recurring theme all the way through the comments, to be honest, but this person is also saying that this game feels less epic to them, and there's perhaps a smaller sandbox feeling. The pacing's too fast, there's too many run-and-gun moments, and it doesn't feel like a team game anymore. And you know what? I can actually see where this guy's coming from. Battlefield 5 is, at the moment, heavily focused on infantry gameplay, and that can have a really big effect on the entire feeling that the game has. 
there's less all-out war in this game than in previous games in the franchise. And I think with elements like tanks and planes not really being balanced very effectively or just not being particularly fun to play with, it's definitely something DICE needs to look at. It's not like the team isn't capable of bringing back that all-out war feeling, it's just that the elements in the game at the moment, and specifically I think the way the maps are laid out with that focus on infantry gameplay, the game as a whole is missing something. There isn't that all-out war feeling in too many different scenarios. It's dominated by infantry gameplay. And so again, I think the Pacific could be a real turning point. There's going to be a lot more vehicle action in the Pacific. We know that we're going to be getting boats as well, so naval warfare is going to make an appearance. That could have a huge effect on how people feel about this game. Whether it brings back the all-out war feeling or not, it's definitely going to change things up and that could be exciting for some people. Now, I've got this tweet here from Mario that once again praises the gunplay. That really does seem to be one of the few shining lights of Battlefield 5 at the moment, but he touches on how much he enjoys the Rush and Squad Conquest game modes. I'm a big fan of the Rush game mode now, now that it's been improved and updated to that Battlefield 3 rule set. That was the biggest change whilst Rush went away and came back again. It feels a lot tighter, it's a lot more focused than it was before, which is great. And I did say for a while that Rush was actually the best game mode in Battlefield 5 because of the focused action around objectives and it made people play as a team. I found it to be a really good experience. But going on with that, Mario says that what he doesn't like is the fact that modes like Rush are time limited. And also he mentions that the team balancer either isn't there, as he says, or isn't working correctly. And I'll agree with Mario here, I don't like the fact that game modes are time limited either, especially since no previous Battlefield games needed to have their game modes set to a limited time structure, and they were fine. But overall, these limited time game modes, I think, are part of DICE's need to provide a consistent gameplay experience, whether that's to the liking of the core community and the general community or not. It's been something that the team has really been pushing for since Battlefield 1 launched, taking away features and taking away options in favour of providing a singular consistent experience for every single player. But what I think the team has failed to realise is that not everyone plays Battlefield for that consistent experience. They might play for many different kinds of experiences, and players like to hold on to that power themselves. Which is understandable when, in the past, the tools have been in place for players to keep that control. When you suddenly remove that control and replace it with first party direction, that is going to frustrate and disappoint players that expect some level of control in these games. And those players then become very vocal about the fact that they don't have the control that they did. One thing you can say, however, is that DICE appears to have noticed their mistake and they're going to try and rectify it and they're building out this rental server framework, they're calling it Private Games, and that's going to arrive in September. This will give players the control back that they've wanted since the launch of the game, and it's going to allow players to break out of this cycle where DICE controls which game modes are active and which aren't. You're going to be able to choose the game modes and maps that you want to play. You can put them in a rotation for you, your friends, and the rest of the community to play. I really do think that one of Battlefield's biggest unspoken features in past games was its ability to keep lots of different types of players happy all within the same game at the same time. Battlefield 4 is still one of the most popular Battlefield games today because the community is able to control and shape the experience into something that they want to play regularly rather than being forced to do what the developers want them to do. Rental servers allow players the freedom to experience what they want, so whether that's Operation Locker 24-7 Conquest 3000 tickets or it's Silk Road Tanks Only 3000 tickets. That scenario is there for them to play every time they boot up the game. They don't have to do what the developers want them to do because there are tools available for them to create the experience that they want. If Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 have really taught us anything, it's that a developer-led, unified, singular approach to Battlefield, taking control of the experience, and I'm talking about Tides of War and the limited time modes here, that is probably not the best thing for Battlefield. Sometimes the community knows what it wants better than the developers. 
And then this final comment here to finish off the video from John, it starts with the familiar theme of good gunplay, which I will agree with. He mentions good audio and graphics as well, but the second bit is somewhat different from the other ones that we've touched on so far. He goes on to say that he doesn't like the cosmetics, the customizations, the vehicle customizations, and anything decent you have to purchase with Boins, which obviously costs real money. Now, this is quite an interesting point because what we've got here are players that are frustrated with customization options being available to them and the manner in which you obtain them. But those customizations are the very reason that so many people were initially excited for Battlefield 5. Finally, we'd be able to take full control of our characters and make them look different to everyone else with uniforms and clothing items and different stuff. We'd be able to take our weapons and skin them out with different items and make them stand out from everyone else. Before launch, it was communicated that these cosmetic items would be obtainable via grinding and you'd be able to purchase those cosmetics as well for real money if you wanted to. So there were two options. And that was a brilliant announcement to come from EA and DICE, but not long after launch, when finally those epic tier cosmetics and the elite outfits started to release, did it actually become clear that the words spoken before launch and this graph or this chart here they were no longer the direction that DICE and EA were taking. Elite Soldiers and Epic Tier Cosmetics suddenly became Boins only, meaning you had to pay real money for them. And that was a massive kick in the teeth to all the loyal players who'd stuck with the game through the messy launch and a buggy few months after that. So, John, I can totally see your point of view here. I, I feel the same. I don't like that players have to spend real money if they want the best looking items in the game. I'd prefer it if they'd be able to grind for those items as well. It kind of feels like those players and their dedication to the game aren't being rewarded. This video today is sponsored by Elgato Gaming. These guys are top of the pile when it comes to recording and streaming equipment, like the HD60S capture card and the Stream Deck hotkey unit, both designed to make your life easier as someone who wants to share their gameplay with the world. For more details on their products, click the link at the top of the description. So that's a little bit of a highlight reel into what the Twitter community is thinking at the moment about Battlefield 5. I really could have gone on for ages with all the different responses, but I'm sure somebody would just complain that I was only trying to take the video over the 10 minute mark so I could make more money. But guess what? We're already over it, so joke's on you. But if you did like this video featuring more community thoughts and opinions, drop this video a like, let me know that you did like it, and maybe I'll do some more in the future if we've got topics that we can use. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.